I think our show has a very universal charm in, in the way it balances fan culture and religion and coming of age and action. So I, I really do think that we have a very wide audience and ultimately the show is a love letter to, to the Marvel fans. So I, I hope the fandom is, is kind of comforted by Kamala as a character and, are, and they're encouraged to continue just living in fantasy land and, and exploring their passion because the Marvel fandom is such a wonderful place to be and it, it really makes you feel like you belong somewhere as cheesy as it sounds, but it's true, it's, it's comfort, right? These characters just mean the world to so many people and this show is really just encouraging and appreciating the amount of work that it takes, that it takes to, to be a fan, you know, analyzing trailers frame by frame, breaking down posters, making theory videos, being active on all the Reddit forums, and it's, it's super important work, and it's a lot, you know, 34 projects in, so I, I'm excited for the fan reaction, and, and I think young people are definitely going to be able to, to relate to, you know, the coming-of-age undertone of it all, and just are, are kind of comforted by the fact that you don't have to have everything figured out at 16. You shouldn't have everything figured out at 16. You're 16. You should live your life find passion, explore it, just, you know, hang out with friends, and life will kind of fall into place when it does. And uh, obviously we're introducing an entirely new diaspora of fans into the MCU, so I think this is going to be a really accessible entry point for, for new fans who, who never really saw themselves in a positive light before, and it could be really intimidating joining the Marvel fandom, but there is space for more people, and uh, this is a good place to start. It means a lot. I'm having the time of my life. Honestly, I'm just coming to work and being myself and playing around. It's the greatest job ever. <laughs> I, like, I fell in love with the comic books and I fell in love with Kamala and the fact that, you know, she's not my little, you know, secret anymore is, is amazing and I can finally talk about the show is, is just a weight off my shoulders. And I'm so excited for the world to finally see, you know, the, the reason I fell in love with those comics and, and the character. I honestly just, we, we all ended up living together in Atlanta, so, so if we weren't hanging out on set, we were definitely partying off set. And uh, yeah, that, that camaraderie was just so wonderful. And, and everyone kind of just saw themselves in us and in our characters because we just really, our entire cast put themselves into the characters they were playing and, and just made it as authentic as possible so we can really capture that that coming of age and the high school experience and how awkward and embarrassing it is to grow up because all of us are super awkward and embarrassing. So it worked out perfectly. I think Kamala and I are pretty much the same person. Her getting her powers and me getting this part really went hand in hand and I, I definitely went on a very similar journey of self-discovery with the character. You know, I, I definitely reconnected with my roots the way Kamala does by the end of episode six. And, and she really uses culture and religion, not as something that she neglects or is something that's dragging her down, but, but something that uplifts her. It, it motivates her, encourage her encourages her story. And I think it's so admirable the way, you know, she's just so unapologetically herself. That there's very little acting involved. It's it's really just just me and reacting to how things I would normally react really and and AvengerCon is the perfect example of all of that I I really just was having the time of my life they didn't even let me see the set up until the day we shot it because they were like oh whatever your reaction is going to be is what we want you know and I was like okay perfect um, also just I get to be a nerd and represent other nerds and that's just such an honor. And uh, yeah, it's really putting all my Marvel knowledge to a test, so. You know, film and TV really do shape how we see people in, in the real world. And you know, you don't have the access to kind of travel everywhere and be exposed to this many people, which is why, you know, making content like this is so incredibly important because you're exposing people to just new cultures and, and, and new ways of life that you normally wouldn't really see in your day-to-day -day bubble. And so I think it's just wonderful that a company as, as big and as success, successful as Marvel is uh, creating space for a character like Kamala to, to kind of thrive and exist and, and take up space. And yeah, I'm just honestly excited to, to see what kind of projects this show inspires because this definitely can't be the end of, of Muslim representation because 
Miss Marvel cannot represent all two billion Muslims and South Asians in the world, but it's it's a start, and uh, yeah, I'm excited that we can get that ball rolling. Abdul and Bilal were a huge um, impact, a huge role in in all of this. They they really, you know, made themselves so involved in in my career starting off, and and they really wanted to to kind of see me succeed, and so. Right before we, we started filming, that, that month of prep, they would just be on phone calls with me asking, you know, about my life, about my high school experience, about the types of guys I had crushes on, the, the, my favorite teachers, my favorite subjects. And, and so they used so much of me to, to create Kamala, and they really wanted me to be a collaborator on this, and they never made me feel like I was, you know, inferior, and they, they just made me feel equal. And, and, like, I was really a part of this this entire project, and... The fact that they really respected my opinion and my voice just meant the world. And the same goes for Shermeen, who who just, you know, incorporated so many incredible, beautiful, colorful cultural aspects into the episodes that she was given. Mira Menon is is such an actor's director. She she really, you know, kind of let us be on set and play around and and act like how we normally would in these real life situations and. She, she gave us such an incredible amount of time for, for us as a cast to bond and really get to know each other and make those relationships as believable as possible. So that, that chemistry on screen is just so infectious when you see these characters. So, yeah. This one is the new boy in town and he's sort of like a foil for Kamala throughout the season. And there's parallels between his relationship with his family and her relationship with her family. And we'll have to just wait and see how it goes from there. Nakia is a strong, witty, extremely empowered activist, fashionista, best friend to Kamala. And um, I think she just poses as an extremely strong support system for her and a, a place of comfort that she can come to whenever she needs. Bruno Corelli is the highly intelligent, empathet uh, empathetic, loyal friend uh, to Kamala Khan who traverses the world with her when things get crazy and she gets powers and... Uh, that relationship with them starts to get crazy as she discovers things and, and gets these powers and uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the Muslim American community haven't been represented in the most positive of lights uh, enough. So I think it's a brilliant thing that this show is being made and hopefully the culture is being shown in a way that people feel proud of. And, and you know, for all of us, it was coming from a huge place of love and approach with such such you know uh passion and care by the whole team and and everybody at the heart of it so you know it means so much to us and i hope that fans kind of and and the community look at it in the same way and and realize that and, and feel seen Justine, do you have any friends like kamala was she a relatable character for you i definitely think that she was a relatable character to me i think um my best friend who actually came to visit me today is very similar to kamala to the in the same way that she's really awkward and quirky and bubbly and I kind of get to be the one that's like okay let's let's calm down just a little bit we're good we're here um so I I think it was really easy as soon as I met Iman to be like okay wait I know this already I've I have this already so yeah I definitely think that she was a relatable character to me I think um my best friend who actually came to visit me today is very similar to Kamala to the in the same way that she's really awkward and quirky and bubbly and I kind of get to be the one that's like okay let's let's calm down just a little bit we're good we're here um so I I think it was really easy as soon as I met Iman to be like okay wait I know this already I've I have this already so yeah a thousand percent brought ourselves to it um she was the first one I met in the cast I mean we were we were together for pre-production for a couple weeks just us two rehearsing and 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 having fun and, 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 and not only like figuring ourselves out like as characters, but as friends. And, and, and we got really close and uh, all of those scenes you see with us, I mean, especially, uh, well, I'm not gonna say, but a lot of the scenes you see with just us two is, is completely authentic. And it's, it's us not only bringing ourselves to the, the table with the scene, but also collaborating with our amazing directors, producers and, and creators and, and figuring out ways of how we can can show that relationship or dynamic, I should say, of Bruno and Kamala better and, and the friendship, the true friendship they have. Huge fans <laughs> and super excited. 
I think that, um, you know, maybe now it's all kind of starting to sink in and hit us as people remind us a little bit more every day. And that in itself is a really surreal experience. But yeah, it's, it's probably one of the most um, gratifying. I don't know. I'm just I'm so grateful and I'm just I'm just trying to enjoy it. Trying to take it day by day, trying to like <laughs> take it all in and not really worry about what's happening the next day. Just focusing on, you know, getting from the start of the day to the end of the day and enjoying it. And yeah, like you said, all big MCU fans. So this was like literally the dream call, like the biggest dream that we could yeah, have like yeah. possibly accomplished. But I, I still can't believe it. It's weird. Uh, I, I, I we work on the same stages as like these amazing actors and actresses like Tom Holland, Tom Hiddleston, you have like all these amazing people there. Like it's, it's so, it's just surreal. And I'm, the only words I, I have or word is I'm just grateful and I'm excited. I'm grateful, yeah. Um, you know, I've been touching on this recently, but it's because it's so true is, is just wearing my culture with pride and you know, I think something that Kamala struggles with is her identity, as, as, as we've spoken about, and that's something I've struggled with in the past. And so, you know, it's um, it's just been a great opportunity to be able to connect with my own roots and feel closer to it. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, in the same way, I growing up mixed, you're in two very different cultures. And when somebody says something about, you know, my Lebanese side, I, as a kid, kind of retreated and, and was you know, held that to myself and wasn't proud of it and almost like was ashamed of it to an extent. And, and it took a long time and this show helped so much in being around people that were embracing the culture and, and being in a diverse cast that, that were also kind of in that experience, like, like you as well, like going through that with the, within themselves helped me so much. And I feel so proud now of, and I like, he was saying, I'm wearing it on my chest and I'm so happy that I had that. I'm so grateful and excited. It was two words um, <laughs> to, to be able to represent that. I think for me, I, I think the one thing I could take away is, is just the opportunity of, of seeing a new like culture I have never seen before in the sense that I, I got to see it so detailed and, and up close and, and getting to learn all these new things and uh, just have the opportunity to learn and expand my knowledge, expand my brain and, and thinking and, and all these things. And, and I think that's the main thing I, I'm going to take away from this whole thing. I hope they walk away with a smile on their face. You know, yeah. it's been made with such passion, such love. As you can see, like we just <laughs> take the mick out of each other every single second and every single day. And we approach that work with that, you know, mentality. And so we just kind of had so much fun. And I think that hopefully it translates and it's just a really bubbly and relatable character and the community surrounding her are also the same. And so hopefully somebody relates to somebody in the show and they feel seen. Yeah, and the show gives off so much warmth. Like when you're watching it, you just feel so like warm and fuzzy and comforted by all of these characters. And I, I think that's a good way of describing it. Somebody, I think everybody's gonna find a comfort character and cling to them, um, which I find so lovely, um, but yeah, I mean, the show is so groundbreaking and I'm I'm hoping that it normalizes this seeing this culture and this family dynamic and and it's just opening the door for other people to do the same. Yeah. I think yeah, that what going off what these two said is just the re relatability of it all. There's always characters that some people haven't even seen in the MCU and, and, and fans have been waiting. I mean, since, you know, Miss Marvel came out, the comic comics came out, people have been waiting and now that it's finally here, people so many fans across the world are gonna look to Kamala Khan, they're gonna look to all these characters and be like, that is who I wanna be like, or I relate to that person. And it's, it's gonna give them that sense of warmth, that sense of comfort. And uh, we all worked really hard to make the source material come to life. Matt, you're gonna have to go first this time. Okay, I'll go first. Empowering. Visibility. Fandom. Pick a new word. <laughs> it's the only one that matters to me right now. <laughs> I, that. That, uh, I think the mother-daughter relationship with Muniba and Kamala is, is very true to life to the South Asian experience. That is how it is. The push, the pull, the not able, especially the immigrant South Asian experience, and not able to let go of the kids as easily as, 
as the broader American culture, because they've come to make the life for the children, so they can't understand why you want to leave. And so that's very believable. Uh, the deep love, the protection, and then, of course, you know, that's universal is the teenage um, rebellion, I think. It's all mothers will get that. Um, but I can't tell you how many people will write to me uh, on Instagram and say, hello, Zenobia, auntie, because, you know, in our culture we say auntie. Uh, I thought my mother is dying to see you on the screen because she's never seen somebody portrayed on the screen. So I think that, that that's some, I know that's not your question, but I just want to throw that in. But that's, it's really important that this is happening and that we're showing this, this dynamic between um, the South Asian mothers and daughters. It's very true to life, I think, yeah. Um, I don't have a father. I've never seen my father. He died when uh, I was nine months old. I'm not married. I don't have a child, but I've always wanted one. And um, given this opportunity with this wonderful script, a wonderful uh, supporting cast and Iman playing my daughter, I think I got to live vicariously through Yusuf Khan. And uh, it was precious because um, I guess what in or what, how did I work on my character? I didn't. I just, Yusuf Khan is a man from the heart and I just played it from the heart. And I think I, the moments that I got with uh, Iman to play uh, the father to connect with her, I think we hit those notes. So I'm very uh, blessed on that front. Uh, but you're also a very warm and you're a warm, kind, loving guy. So I think that that came naturally. And I think that Iman is very good at turning up that vulnerability when the camera is on her as well. So I think that, that there were some beautiful moments you all got. Yeah, so uh, Kamala and Amir have a, they have a solid, you know, much older brother, much younger sister relationship. Uh, he's kind of like a third parent who she doesn't listen to because nobody listens to the third parent. I don't listen to my older brother. Uh, I'm like the goody-goody kind of of the two, and she's the more rebellious one. Um, uh, they have a lot of respect for each other while also getting on each other's nerves. Uh, just like a sibling dynamic. Um he really wants to look out for her and protect her. And she doesn't need it, you know? Yeah, she doesn't need She doesn't need it. it. She's stronger than him. Uh, she has more willpower than him. She's smarter than him. Um, and she's just got a lot more going for herself than he does. Um, and he's kind of a, a little aloof to that. Um, he thinks he's got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. When he, he really doesn't, the guy doesn't know how to drive, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, but yeah, they, they you know, <laughs> they are a classic, much older sibling, much younger sibling uh, duo. Well, I think the reason why the family's authenticity would have a relatability to everyone, because at the end of the day, it's human relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's as basic as that, yeah. and the South Asian uh, community all over the world will immediately connect with this. I mean, don't look for you know uh, earth-shattering uh, exposés and about you know what a family is. It's a loving Pakistani immigrant family. Everybody will relate to the human dynamics and the love that they have for each other. Every family has. A strife. Every uh, yeah. older, younger sibling has that. Every uh, you know, wife and husband have this. Uh, uh, I mean, unstated competition with the children that you know. Yeah. Somebody plays bad cop. Yeah. Somebody plays good yeah. cop. Yeah. And you know, and somewhere For along sure. the way, they both also kind of come together to say, no, okay, listen, I agree with your mother that you know this is not. A, it's just the way they come across. So everybody will relate to it. It's human. It's it's family emotions. I think everybody will relate to it regardless of race or religion because the family elements that are there are just the same in all families. Love, conflict, um, you know, sometimes that love-hate push-pull between parents and children, caring. These are not things that are exclusive to yeah. any community. These are universal things. 
and uh, we happen to be Muslim, and that's the point. We are a normal family who happen to be Muslim. We don't want to come in guns blazing saying, hey, look at us, we're this Muslim family. So everybody watching it with an open heart and an open mind is going to relate to it. And God forbid if somebody doesn't relate to it, here's your chance to start understanding what a sweet, happy family can be. Yeah, and you know, like, I think people will find the relatability in, in this family because, I mean, we're all pretty funny. And, uh, and everybody is naturally their most self-selves in front of their family. And I think more so than not, people are funny when they're with their family. They love yeah. joking mm -hmm. with each other. They love, you know, annoying each other. And because the guards are down. Yeah, yeah. The, their guards are down. They have no walls. Um, um, and I think people are really going to love that aspect of this family. Why not? Why is it not? In 2022, it's really important to show female leadership, to show Muslim leadership, to show minority leadership. And she embodies all of that. And there's a lot of girls out there who are going to look at her and go, yeah, maybe I can dream my dream too. Little girls everywhere. All it's, like questioning, it's like questioning why did Malala Yousafzai come around? Why not? Why not? Yeah, for me, it's uh, particularly important because I have uh, three nieces. Mm. And, um, you know, they're like eight, six, and three. And, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have anything like this go growing up. Uh, and um, it, really, it really made me feel like the other. And so I'm really excited for my three nieces to watch this and feel like they belong, like mm. like they are not the other, like they are normal, and and um, and I just think that's so powerful. Just to, it shouldn't be powerful to feel normal. It should be normal to feel normal. Mm. And the fact that my nieces get to live a life that we Did. didn't get to live yeah. growing up, I think that's beautiful. The other thing being that. You know, in the in the Muslim community, the the perception is about the girls are in hijab. They're not meant to do this. They're not meant to do that. But that's not the case. It's because the Muslim community is a very beautifully diverse community. Yeah. And here in America, the way they're assimilating with uh, and contributing to society is fantastic. So, for Marvel to uh, greenlight uh, a project which kind of shows a progressive Muslim family. Uh, assimilating with the Western uh, world uh, and the way that one of their children is, while holding on to uh, the family values, the uh, the uh, religious values and all that, still dreams and, you know, does things which anybody else would do and does it very well. So I think it's a fabulous thing, which is why the why not. Iman, but, Iman's a natural. Iman's a pro. She came into this, you know, like... She had a day of not knowing what she was doing, and then boom, she just like figured her stuff out. Un like she learned, it's to me, it feels like she learned everything in one moment. You know, like in the in the Matrix, where uh, where he didn't know how to fight, and then they did that thing, and he's like, "I know kung fu." That's what Iman did on this job. She didn't she didn't know anything to start, and then suddenly she knows everything, and she just like figured it all out. Yeah, it She's was so her smart. film school, it She's was so her smart. acting school, it was like her, you know, she she didn't go to film school, she didn't go to act, she worked it all out in real time, and I'm sure in her, her mind she had, you know, doubts and days that she was less than happy, but she hit the ground running, and, and you couldn't really tell uh, in the performance part of it that she was struggling. Ever. Miss Marvel Comics came out when? Eight, ten years ago? Yeah. And uh, this is coming out 2022. The stars aligned for Iman to come of yeah. age and for this At to this happen. At this time, yeah. She yeah. was born to play this part. You know, the universe conspired and it's going to be She knows amazing. the Marvel universe so well, too. It's yeah. just ridiculous. She was born to be Miss Marvel Kamala Khan.
Yeah. Well, after Bad Boys for Life, we wanted to uh, we wanted to do, to do something even bigger, and we were asking ourselves, what is the next step? And the next step was obviously Marvel, Marvel. because that's <laughs> the biggest in the biz, and and we had to be part of that. And um, we were kind of saying, oh, if we're gonna do something, and joking around, it's gonna have to be a Muslim character, not knowing that actually there was a Muslim character they were planning to do a show on. It was Miss Marvel, and we we discovered the comics, fell in love with the character and the world, and. And that's how it all started. That's how we convinced Kevin to, to give it to us. So yeah, for us, uh, we didn't know the comic book. So after we discovered, um, yeah, we just fell in love with Kamala and her family and her world. And we just read all the comic books. <laughs> and we were like, we need to capture this vibrancy, this colorfulness, this, this, this world on, on the big screen. So for us, that was a challenge. And, and sometimes we were just, you know, copying some scenes from the comic book itself to, 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 the, to the screenplay. Um, and also that we wanted to do an homage to the, you know, the comic book aesthetic. And that's why we uh, injected the animation into it because it was not really presenting the script. So we were thinking, <coughs> is Marvel going to accept this animation uh, element we want to put in because it portrays for us it portrays her you know her fantasy or you know her imagination and uh, when we told it and when we made our case with Kevin he said I love it I love it so he just uh, accepted and he said when you use it then you use it for a good reason so that's how uh, how we yeah how big the influence was from the comic book itself well there's a multiple level. Uh, on one hand, it's, uh, we have a personal connection with the character, uh, to, uh, being Muslim Pakistani girl, a uh, teenager, uh, searching herself, searching her own identity. It relates to us in a f way that we are Moroccan Belgians and we're Muslim. And, and also, you know, we had the same struggles when we were teenagers, not knowing where we belong, who we need to be, what is our destiny. So throughout all of our work and interest, that's something that you always see. There's, there's the kind of, you know, identity crisis that we have in all our characters. And, um, and at the same time, it's just we, we, love, uh, we love everything that has vibrant colors, cool camera movements. And that's why we look at a lot of John Hughes movies, uh, John Hughes movies, uh, Spike Lee movies, Steven Spielberg. And we try to, to have that kind of vibe and, and, and care of character into Kamala Khan. Well, the, for the first one, directing the first episode, the challenge is that you, you want to, you know, tell the world that you have this person, this teenager, and, and make the world care about her and follow her without necessarily all the way or, or right away go with the superpowers. You still want to, you know, lay out what, what, what she, who she is, who are his family, or her family and, and friends, and, uh, and why it's important that, uh, that we follow her. And then, you know, making a, a charming, endearing character that eventually is going to fall into that extraordinary story of superpowers in the larger MCU. So, you know, that, that was like, the, the, I would say, the biggest challenge, like, like creating that empathy for somebody that, that the whole world doesn't know yet. And, yeah. and then uh, episode six, it was like, it's a final episode. It's a moment that Kamala Khan becomes Miss Marvel. So that, that was like, you know, it's like a closure to the whole journey. Um, and... You know, for us as directors, it's, it's the first time that we work with this big Marvel machine and, you know, using all this blue screen and green screen, not seeing what is happening. But, uh, yeah, we had the best of the best in the world, so we were in good hands, and I think we made a spectacular ending with uh, Miss Marvel. Well, the comic book characters already there on the page were vi very diverse, so it was just logical as we do the adaptation that our cast would reflect the diversity of the comic book, which on its own reflects the diversity of society, the countries everywhere in the world, and just also the fandom, uh, who, is, who is very diverse on its own. And having people of, of Pakistani origin, that just you know added more to the authenticity. You know, Iman Vellani, the Pakistani girl, so she, she lived through all of that, and, and she added from her own background. And, and and that's you know every every single cast member added more to the character than was on the page and and it just did it with so much natural flair that it just felt as if we were watching witnessing a real family coming to life ah uh, man is a blessing <laughs> she uh first time i saw her in the casting i thought like yeah she's the she's destined to be to be kamala khan because her real life story really is parallel with kamala khan's 
Um, Iman is a Pakistani um, uh, Canadian girl, and she's also between that those two worlds. But she's also at the same time a big Marvel fan, and she's like a Marvel expert. She knows everything. She's like an encyclopedia, and she's also somebody who's you know she, her favorite movie is, is Iron Man, and and Kevin Feige is her idol, and she's also a cinephile. She knows a lot about movies, so. For us, it was working with a film director herself because she knew a lot about, you know, making movies and, and talking about the character and the story. She was very uh, smart in that way that she really augmented the story, but also her character. She gives so much soul to the character that it is, uh, it is, it's really the heart and, and soul of the whole show. Well, the thing is that you have a character that is that is different from all the other characters. That is a, a Muslim character, um, and and it's a female female Muslim character, which is important for like I would say all the Muslim girl in the world. Uh, it makes us think uh, of of all the Muslim women of our lives that we try to pay homage to. Whether it's my wife or his, or his sister, our mothers and, and nieces. So it's it's cool to have somebody that represents them, and at the same time, I think that that what was so good about the comic book and that's what we try to adapt to in TV show. I mean, Iman does a great job in that is that it's a universal story that everybody can relate to her. Everybody can feel empathy and care for her and find her endearing and follow her journey as a, as a character and, and her story. Um, even if you are not a Muslim girl, and that is that is also the the beautiful aspect of Marvel and, and and entertainment overall, that you you care about people that are like seem very different from yourself, but at the same time, you know, has these universal values. Well, I hope you know that people will will love Kamala Khan and 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 love her family because her real superpower is her family and friends. And, and that they, you know, she's, did you follow her journey? Because, you know, in this show, she's like trying to find her identity and, and step by step, she's gonna embrace her, you know, her Pakistani culture, American culture, and she's gonna become Miss Marvel. And there is such a big future ahead for her that I hope that the audience will grow with her. Like, you know, like we do with Peter Parker who's from Queens and, and, and that's kind of for us like the bar. We want, we want Miss Marvel to have a long life. Um, Miss Marvel's arc in the show it goes it it's built out over six episodes. It meant that we had loads of time to make the big character swings that we wanted to make, and for her to go on this journey into figuring out who she is, coming into her own, and making it a really unique story that we haven't seen in the MCU beforehand. Um, and having that six episodes meant we could take our time, but also no time feels like enough. I always want to spend more time with her. I always am like, but wait, what if I go down this road or this other journey? So I need the limitations because otherwise I'd go for a thousand years telling this story. Um, but at the same time, having this really concise but juicy six hours of television to tell this story before she goes and joins everybody else and goes off on what other adventures that lay ahead for her um, feels really exciting and I think in terms of the breaking of the story we get to do classic storytelling um, modalities but at the same time we get to do something a little bit different because of the nature of the MCU because of the nature of Kamal and her background and because of the freedom the creative freedom that was given to us um, that was not surprising but really joyful to receive in such a massive uh, franchise like Marvel so I'm excited to share with everybody those six episodes and the journey she goes through, I wish I could tell you all of the juicy things we have in store for you. Getting the balance on the page between heart and humor and action was kind of the uh, eternal struggle for this show um, in a really positive way. And I think we've come out to a really delicious mix at the end. Part of me was like, I just want to luxuriate in her family dynamic and then her dynamic with her friends because they're funny and warm and really, I don't know, just so lovable. I just want to hang out with all of them all day. Um, flip side, we're in the Marvel universe and I want to see I want to see her do some cool stuff. Like I want to see her do her action sequences. I want to see her take down some baddies. I want to see her do, I just want to see the, full range of what she can do. And I think the luxury of time is what we have on our side. We have this episode run to introduce her to the MCU, where I'm sure she'll be in, I don't know what happens in the Marvels, but I'm sure there'll be all kinds of wonderful action going on in there. Um, so the luxury of time meant that we could have our cake and eat it too. We could have the action. We could also have those grounded moments and the moments that just, I think, keep me coming back and bring me to re-watching stuff is I just want to live in her world and spend time with them and I really hope that that comes through to the audience as well that that heart and humor is what you come back to a show for every single time um yes um 
when we set out to develop this show for the screen, um, there are a couple of changes that we made from the comic books that were never about her internal world, but really about um, making it appropriate for live action and also bring it into a modern current day MCU that exists inside of the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we've all seen in the first place. So some of those changes include changes to her power set. Some of them include um, changes that aren't necessarily changes to what exists, but changes on where our focus goes. Um, a lot of what I wanted to spend time on in this show was with her family and with her friends. And there's loads of that in the comic books, but that really is the heart of this show, as we'll see as the story progresses and as you'll have seen in the episodes already. So those are the major changes, but I'd like to think that we stay true to the heart of those comic books because every single creative involved in this television show, including myself, including every writer, including people on crew, we just love those comics so much that so it was our our biggest goal was to honor this comic book, um, which we all think was an incredible piece of art. So um, those are the changes, but spiritually, no changes. It's so important to have a young female Pakistani superhero from the background that she's from, um, because it's important that everyone gets to have their story on the big scale that Marvel allows us to have tell our stories on. Um, and I hope the same for people from any marginalized background and any background that's been kind of pushed to the margins and not been part of mainstream um, storytelling in television and film and certainly in the West. Um, and it's so important to me personally to see people, um, to see the creative team behind the camera. Um, we've set a real precedent for authentic voices, um, telling authentic voices, authentic artists from those backgrounds, telling their own story and contributing their own stories to this larger than life story. Um, and it's so important to show that you can do it behind the camera, in front of the camera, and it can be universally appealing and it can be popular and beloved by people not just from that background, um, but people who are just fans of this genre and for, of what we're doing. So it felt vitally important to tell a story that's so specific and that specificity then being so universal. I hope, I think, I'm sure of it. There are a few changes, uh, including the power set um, and also, in, and that was about integrating um, her into the MCU that, as it already exists and as she'll exist in the MCU in the future. When viewers come to Miss Marvel, they can look forward to a heartfelt, joyful, funny, adventurous story um, about a girl coming into her own, figuring out who she is in the world and doing so with compassion and doing so with an optimism and like an infectious joy. Uh, I think that's what's most exciting about this television show is if we, even if you strip everything else back, there's just so much joy to be had spending time with Kamala Khan. Um, and I think that everybody will go away for this with, I hope, a full heart. I was desperate to be a part of this project. Uh, I've always been a fan of the comic books. And when I first discovered the comics, I just felt so seen and recognized, but also the comics themselves were so beautiful and so well told and so crafted, crafted with such care. And they're so intricate that um, when I found out that it was going to be adapted for a screen. I didn't know quite whether it was for TV or film when I first heard about it. Um, I just had to put myself forward and I had to fight for it because it's just, uh, they're just an inc it's an incredible piece of art, those comic books, and I really wanted to be a part of it. In creating Kamala's world and the people around her, uh, we had this wealth of resources when it came to the comic books. We had everything that um, had been, the world building in the comic books is so dense um, and goes to so many incredible places. And there were things that were snippets in the comic books that we then wanted to build out. There are things that were dominant elements in the comic books that we were like dedicated to keeping. Um, so a lot of uh, what we were doing was drawing from those comic books. But in addition to that, every single one of the creators, all of the writers in the writer's room, we had people from all different backgrounds and they're all sharing and giving of themselves. Um, and I think I, I find that to be a great honor and a great gift. They're all sharing their, not only their work and their creative and artistic energy, but their personal lives and what they've been through and what their teenagehood was like and what their second generation immigrant experience was like and what their American experience is like and what their Muslim experience is like. And that was just in the writing room to start with. Then as we added more and more collaborators to bring the show to life, everyone was so giving of themselves. And so really what it's drawn from, what is drawn from in this show is everybody's individual, unique, special, precious experiences but put into this canvas that Kamala Khan allows us to tell this tale and share so much of ourselves with the world. Um, so those are the things that we drew from, uh, but I hope that everyone can see the connection between that comic book existing gave us the freedom and the power to do that on in live action. It was really just a gift. Um, I think the best part about um, bringing Kamala to, to life, which is a character I'm very, very close to, of course, is 
um, just seeing that evolution and seeing how so many different collaborators bring um, Kamala's story in such a bright and really unexpected way. I mean, we've got such incredible directors and, and writers um, and, you know, across all of our many departments who are bringing their own perspectives and spin on Kamala's story. And, you know, I love the collaboration process and to be able to be a part of it, to be able to see, really see, see, see my kid grow up um, and at the same time um, have her make friends with from other people is pretty awesome. And so it's been really gratifying um, and enlightening and also really just incredible to see the comic come to life um, in such a bold new way. Uh, that's that's the thing that I've been just most happy and excited about. Um, well, I mean, I definitely identify with Kamala. She is, uh, <laughs> she's a lot like me in a lot of ways, of course. I mean, the, a lot of the comic was, was based on sort of stories of my childhood kind of growing up as, brown kid in Jersey. So, um, you know, I'm also a big fan of Marvel. I also sort of grew up in a household where, you know, comics and cartoons and Spider-Man and, and X-Men cartoons existed. So for me, um, there's a lot of, a lot of similarities try, trying to figure out, navigate all of the different, you know, uh, expectations of you and who you are and who you want to become. Um, you know, I would argue Kamala is probably a little, uh, probably a little a little smarter than me right I feel like I feel like we say that of our kids she's she's smarter she's smarter than me and and uh um has sort of this understanding behind her years but it's uh it's it's a delight to see Iman encompass all of that she truly is incredible well I mean as you know someone who grew up in um in Jersey and who was, is, <laughs> I am still Pakistani and Muslim and um, uh, still someone who is trying to probably figure things out. I think a lot of the experiences were of me uh, navigating my multiple identities and and being sort of multi-hyphenate and not understanding that that was kind of cool and great. And I um, was constantly searching and trying to find my voice. And that's really, I think, um, the, the, the guts of what the, the show is about too. Um, and bringing that in was incredibly important to us. And I think, you know, telling a story about identity is, um, something that feels kind of like therapy to me, I guess, because <laughs> we've been, I've been thinking about this for a while. So it's like, it's lovely to be able to do that, um, in such a beautiful way. I mean, Iman is Kamala, you know, she is, she is that, that character and she is, um, very bright eyed and, and, and sweet and kind and funny. And she has, um, this sort of sense of wonder about the world. And, and I think that's exactly who Kamala is. And I think, and of course she's a super fan like Kamala is. So it just, it just made sense. It made absolutely sense, like the, the most perfect sense in the world for Iman to be Kamala. I feel like, you know, I can't imagine any, anyone else um, to, to play her. It's really a gift to have found her. Well, we adapted her powers so they're more like, you know, this, uh, what we're calling hard light energy and linking it more to something related to her past and her family heritage. And so it's sort of this inheritance of powers more than anything else. And, and, and of course, we will be linking it to some other stories in the MCU. So it, it made sense for us to be able to evolve her character from the page and at the same time still be true to the embiggened fists and embiggened hands and, sorry, embiggened legs and sort of, you know, playing with those those visual iconic moments um, from the, the comic in, in sort of some fun and often unexpected ways. Well, I think each of them, you know, Adeline Bilal, um, Mira and Charmin each have brought their own perspectives of uh, existing in multiple worlds, you know, and, and, and bringing sort of this authenticity to whether it's the diasporic experience or the, you know, Pakistani experience. Um, they all sort of have their own kind of missions in the storytelling that they're doing that I think, you know, have uh, really represent different aspects of Kamala's life and what Kamala is is looking for. So I think 
each of them, you know, you know, Adil and Bilal are, are really great with sort of this crazy, you know, wild visual sensibility and, you know, also are, are, uh, are Moroccan and Belgium and kind of dealing with their own diasporic challenges. And Mira in the same way, you know, grew up in Jersey and she's South Asian and she really understands that sort of high school American experience when you're brown and really knows how to tell stories of, of young people so well. And then Charmin, who's, you know, Pakistani and who's been dealing with tells a lot of beautiful stories and focuses so much on women's rights in Pakistan and such a champion of women, um, but also, you know, understands how to craft stories about real people and 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 real circumstances and tell them in, in a really stunning and captivating way. I think all of them together have really put together a really kind of fun and beautiful and funny and quirky um, series. And that's kind of why the entire season is so surprising. Um, I think that people can look forward to a lovely and fun, um, you know, family and friends, you know, circle around Kamala and a wonderful coming of age story that feels, you know, very fresh and unique at the same time. And that feels very much like it can live in the Marvel universe. And I think that's what people are going to be excited about the most is that this feels, you know, familiar yet different. And, um, at the same time, I think they're going to really love the entire cast and what the world looks like. So, you know, hopefully they'll they'll want they'll just they'll want more of it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out our suggested video playlists for more entertaining videos. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.